Hey YouTube, this is Ozark's brother Jerry, and uh, this week's uh, portion is La Igash, and it's and he and that means and he drew near or then he drew near, and that comes from uh, the the portion is uh, Genesis forty four eighteen to forty seven twenty seven. And the end he drew near comes from uh, 44, 18. It says, then Judah came near unto him. So that's what the portion is. And uh, for an overview, we have uh, Judah begs for Benjamin. Joseph reveals himself. And that's, that's what I want to zero in on today is, you know, why he hadn't reveal himself. And uh, Yaakov and family moved to Egypt in seven years of famine. So, a lot to cover in uh, four chapters. I'd like to, I'll start off with uh, Genesis 47, excuse me, 42, 7. And it goes, And Joseph said unto his brethren, and he knew them, and made himself strange unto them, and spake roughly unto them. And he said unto them, Whence come ye? And they said, From the land of Canaan to buy food. So, uh, so there's his brothers that he used to live with, and they don't they don't recognize him. So he reveals who he is in Genesis forty five three, and and that reads, And Joseph said unto his brethren. I am Joseph, doth my father yet live? And his brother could not answer him, for they were troubled at his presence. So, uh, that could probably blew their mind. So Joseph is often spoken of, and, and I believe he is, as a forerunner of the Messiah. In that, you know, he was, he was a forerunner of the Messiah because he saved Israel by overseeing the storage of food in Israel. Uh, so if Joseph is the if Joseph is the uh, a forerunner of Messiah, was it ever the case that the Messiah wasn't recognized? Well there was the Messiah wasn't recognized three times. Once in uh, John twenty fifteen, then Luke twenty four thirteen, and finally in John twenty one. So let's look at one of them. Uh, and I want to read Luke 24, 14 through 31. Or 13, I guess. Through 41. And behold, two of them went that same day to a village called Emmaus which was from Jerusalem, about three square furlongs. Now, Emmaus was a, a site of a great Maccabean victory. So I don't know, you know, is that related? I don't know. And they talked together of all the things which had happened. And it came to pass that while they, and if, I'm, if I have this correct, Yeshua has been dead three days, or Yeshua has been in the grave three days at this point. And it came to pass that while they communed, communed together, and reasoned, Yeshua himself drew near and went with them. But their eyes were holden that they should not know him. They didn't recognize him. And he said unto them, What manner of communications are these, that ye have one to another as ye walk and are sad? Uh, and the one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answering, said unto him, Art thou only a stranger of Je Jerusalem, and hast not known the things which are come to pass there in these days? And he said unto them, What things? And they said unto him, Concerning Yeshua of Nazareth, which was a prophet, mighty indeed, and word before Elohim and all the people, and how the chief priest and our rulers delivered him to be condemned to death and have, cruci and have crucified him. But we trusted that he had we trusted that it had been he which should have redeemed Israel. Beside all this today is the third day since these things were done. 
Yea, and certain women also of our company made us astonished, which were early at the sepulchre. And when they came, and when they found not his body, and they came, saying that they had also seen a vision of the angels, which said that he was alive. And certain of them which were with us went to the sepulchre, and found it even so, as the women had said. But him they saw not. Then he said unto them, O fools, slow of heart, to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Ought not Messiah to have suffered these things, and to enter into his glory? And beginning at Moshe and all the prophets, he expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. And they drew nigh unto the village, whither they went, and he made as though he would have gone further. But they constrained him, saying, Abide with us, for it is toward evening, and the day is far spent. And he went in to tarry with them. And it came to pass, as he sat at meat with them, he took bread and blessed it, and broke and gave it to them. And their eyes were opened, and they knew him, they knew it was Yeshua, and he vanished out of their sight. So, also uh, keep in mind these are tier two apostles. <laughs> that's my, that's my uh, adjective. That's not that's not in scripture. One was Cleopas. We don't know who the other gentleman was, and I don't know that we know who this Cleopas is. We don't know who they were, but they reported to the eleven apostles in verse thirty-three. So we know it wasn't you know one of them. I can't, I can't say for certain, but it appears he took the time to explain to them how all the messianic prophecies had been fulfilled in his lifetime. So, you know, why would he do that to them? Why wouldn't, you know, the, why would he do that to these tier two apostles? Well, you know, maybe perhaps an intimate look was needed, you know, in examining how these prophecies were fulfilled um, with someone you know, who maybe wasn't, wasn't weary of traveling with the master, you know, for the three years of his ministry. And, uh, and just to look at it with fresh eyes, that all these prophecies have been fulfilled. So why, so why did uh, Joseph make himself strange to his brothers? In much the same way that Messiah wants to care for us, you know, he came to die for us. He's the source of living waters. He's the bread of life. So he wants to take care of us. So in much the same way that Messiah wants to care for us eternally, Joseph wanted to care for Israel. I believe everything he did was calculated to get the family, including Jacob and Benjamin, into Egypt. This may have included seeing if his brothers were over the jealousy issues when uh, Benjamin was given five times the food the other brothers were given. So, you know, I say jealousy issues. We know that uh, Jacob made Joseph a coat of many colors. And and then, you know, he didn't make it for the others. And then Joseph had these dreams of his brothers and his parents doing obeisance to him. So they were, you know, uh, jealousy is probably what, what uh, drove them to throw him into the pit. So then the, the food that Benjamin got more than his brothers was when they went to uh, Joseph's house and Joseph sat with the Egyptians and then the brothers sat over there arrayed by age and then Joseph just watched as they were served. And it appears they passed the test. And another question that may be worth pondering is would we recognize the Messiah if we saw him, is there a chance that we can meet him and not, not know who he is? Of course, he knows the future. So if we were to talk to him, talk with him um, incognito, if we didn't recognize him, it would be for our benefit. But do we know enough to even recognize him? You know, will he be at the diner eating a BLT? Will he be at the lake fishing on Saturday? What if he came as a small child begging on the street? Would we be kind to him? You know, you guys that have been overseas in the military, you know what that's about. You can have a bunch of kids come up to you begging because 
they're hungry and poor. If you were standing on a street corner prophesying, would we stop and give an air? I lived in New York City for a year, and, uh, you know, that was, I didn't believe this way then, but uh, that, even at that point, that was kind of uncomfortable for me. But I, I don't know why. But a gentleman that I really respect as a teacher says, if you see somebody doing something strange, go up and ask what they're doing. You know, you may learn something. Because, you know, his ways are not our ways. We, it might be strange to us, but perfectly, but maybe should be the norm. And another question tangent to this, that if the Messiah revealed himself to us, would he necessarily reveal himself to everyone? If not, why not? So, you know, maybe this is getting too far out there, but uh, how much of the world we interact with is real? How much of it is just a distraction from important things? Um, are we being tested? I once had a... Uh, I once had a test for an intelligence agency, and I didn't even know what was going on, <laughs> and I failed. <laughs> so, so interesting. Uh, but you know, the more I study, the more I find out how little I know, and it's just that many more questions that I have. So, uh, thanks for listening, and uh, keep reading those uh, Torah portions. We'll talk with you next week.